Hey there, fellow Tolkienites. So what's with the White Tree of Gondor? Why is it so important to Minas Tirith and to Aragorn? Furthermore, why is it dead? In this video, we're going to explore all of those questions and trace the long and glorious history of the White Tree of Gondor. But before we do, would you please hit that subscribe button? Do me the great honor, right? Subscribe to this channel here, and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. So let's read a little passage here from the Lord of the Rings about this very topic. And Gandalf coming looked at it and said, Verily, this is a sapling of the line of Nimloth the Fair, and that was a seedling of Galathelion, and that a fruit of Telperion of many names, eldest of trees. So we have a lot of names thrown out there and one very short passage. We have Nimloth the Fair, we have Galathelion, and we have Telperion. All right. So the white tree is best known from the Lord of the Rings first as the dead tree that Pippin sees in the court of the fountain of Minas Tirith just before his first meeting with Denethor. And second, it is known for the sapling discovered on the slopes of Mindaluan by Gandalf and Aragorn. So it's actually two white trees. Actually, there are several white trees. So we're going to need to start a little further back. The history of the white tree goes all the way back to the two trees of Valinor, kind of. As you probably recall, the two trees of Valinor were destroyed, murdered by Melkor and Ungoliant, which is the major catastrophe that sets the events of the Silmarillion in motion. Those two trees were Lorelin, the golden tree, and Telperion, the silver tree. And Telperion's flower became the moon. Tel uh, Galathelion, which is also mentioned there, um, was a copy of Telperion, the silver tree, that was made by Yavanna, one, one of the Valar, uh, for the elves of Tyrion. And so the elves that lived in Tyrion were the Vanyar and the Noldor, right? So of the th there was three groups that made the journey to uh, the Blessed Realm, three groups of elves that made the journey to the Blessed Realm, the Vanyar, the Noldor, and the Teleri. Okay, so the Vanyar and the Noldor live in Tyrion, and Galathelion is the copy of Telperion that's like Telperion in every way, perfect copy, except it does not give off its own light, right? That was a, that was a special property of the two trees that gave off this blessed light, okay? Um, and so Galathelion stands there, but the poor Teleri did not have a copy of, uh, did not have a copy of Telperion very close to them, all right? So they get a copy of Galathelion, a seedling of Galathelion, I shouldn't say a copy, a seedling of Galathelion. Um, and that's Celeborn. Celeborn flourishes in Tol Arisea. Um, Interesting note, of course, is that Celeborn is also the name of Galadriel's husband. Um, so do with that what you will. Won't get real into that, but uh, sometimes names reoccur. All right. Then we have Nimloth. So Nimloth the Fair. Nimloth the Fair was the white tree of Numenor, right? It was the white tree that stood... Um, in the king's court in Armenelos, the capital city of Numenor. And Nimloth was a seedling of Celeborn, right? So the tree that stood in Tol Arisea that was a sapling of Galathelion, all right? Nimloth is a seedling of, uh, of Celeborn. It was brought to Numenor by the Eldar of Tol Arisea as a symbol of friendship between the two races. Um, and another interesting note on names, there is, a, there is in fact a character named Nimloth, and, and that is the name of Dior's wife. And Dior is the son of Baron and Luthien. So Nimloth is the mother of Elwing, the wife of Erendil, and thus the grandmother of both Elrond and Elros, right? So maybe some connection there as to why they chose this name, especially Elros being the uh, first king of Numenor. All right, so how do we get from Nimloth and Numenor to the White Tree of Gondor, right? Several thousand years later. All right, so there's actually four, count them, four White Trees of Gondor. But let's start, let's go back to Nimloth and what happened to Nimloth, all right? So we know that Numenor no longer exists, right? And it's in the Third Age. Um, and when Sauron came to uh, Numenor late in the Third Age, right? When he was taken captive to Numenor, he convinced our Farazon to destroy it and use it as kindling for the temple to Melkor, right? This, so when Sauron came there, he, uh, he, he was kind of the, you know, the whisperer for our Farazon, and he convinced him that, you know, we need to create this temple to the Dark Lord, right? Uh, to to uh, Melkor, right? The, this is this great secret, and we're going to 
uh, take the faithful of Numenor, those who are still true to the old ways, and we're going to sacrifice them to uh, you know this dark lord, right? So he's like, and we're going to use Nimloth, right? This tree, we're going to make it kindling for this fire of sacrifice, right? So really, yeah, some really like insidious stuff there. Um, but fortunately, Isildur, right? Isildur, who gets a bad rap, uh, he saves a fruit of Nimloth before it can be burned. All right. So, uh, you know, we, we always give Isildur, kind of give him grief for being the guy that, uh, that didn't had a chance to destroy the ring and Sauron's ring and didn't. Um, but remember, Isildur, before, before he made that huge mistake, he did a lot of really good heroic things. He was a pretty, pretty awesome dude uh, before that happened. So, you know, give credit where it's due. Isildur, uh, pretty, pretty great, pretty great guy overall. Um, we all make mistakes, right? And who among us would be able to resist the lure of the One Ring? Let's just be honest, okay? All right, so uh, then we get the White Tree of Gondor, okay? So Isildur manages to save this fruit and that, and he takes it to uh, away from Numenor and he takes it to Middle Earth itself. And, uh, and then he plants it in uh, Minas Ithil. All right, so Minas Ithil is better known to most of us as Minas Morgul, all right? So uh, you're like, why would he plant it in Minas Morgul? I thought that was a bad place. Well, remember, Minas Morgul was Minas Ithil before Sauron took it over, right? It was actually constructed by, uh, by the Numenorians on the, on the outskirts of Mordor, right? To kind of be a, a, you know, the first line of defense against, uh, against Sauron, right? Um, but uh, so Isildur plants it there, and this becomes the first white tree of Gondor. And this is actually still the end of the Second Age. So uh, Sauron attacks Minas Ithil in, the, in 3429 and captures, and captures the city and burns the white tree. So Sauron apparently really hates the white tree. Um, yet Isildur again escapes with a seedling. All right. So that gives us Gondor's white tree number two, right? White tree of Gondor number two. So the seedling of White Tree of Gondor number one is planted in Minas Anor by Isildur in the Third Age, year two, in memory of his brother Anarion. And it lasts until the Third Age, 1636, when the Great Plague hits Gondor. Uh, so does the White Tree die because of the plague or because of the death of the king? Um, so Telimnar means silver flame. So maybe like flame of life, like that's the name of the king, right? So maybe um, maybe there's something going on here where the the tree, right? The white, white tree of Gondor kind of feeds off of the life energy of uh, the king of Gondor, right? The king, you know, whoever is in line to be kind of the high king of Numenor, right? Um, that may have something to do with why the second white tree lives for such a long time and then uh, and then dies. But it's also, there's a great plague that hits that hits Gondor. So, you know, maybe both of those things, uh, was it causative? Was it correlative? I'm not really sure, but, uh, there you go, right? The King and the white tree both die. Um, so, uh, then we have the third white tree of Gondor, right? So one would assume, uh, that there was another fruit that was saved and this becomes the third, uh, the third tree. And this one is planted now in Minas Tirith, right? It's the same place as Minas Anor, but it's had its name changed to uh, Minas Tirith, right? So a little side note on that. So the reason it's Minas Ithil and Minas Anor originally, uh, Minas Ithil means Tower of the Moon, Minas Anor means Tower of the Sun, okay? Uh, so pretty appropriate, actually, and just in terms of typology, symbology, that, it, that the original white tree of Gondor is planted in Minas Ithil, has a more silvery, the moon, silver, right? Um, and then you have and also the flower of Telperion became the, uh, became the moon. And you have Minas Anor over here, the tower of the sun. And then, uh, and then Minas Anor, once Minas Ithil is gone or becomes Minas Morgul, changes, uh, Minas Anor changes its name to Minas Tirith. Perfectly straightforward. I know it's not confusing at all. Okay. Uh, Minas Tirith just means like the, the, I believe it's the tower of the tower of watch, the tower of the guard. Um, also not the only Minas Tirith in all of Middle Earth. So interesting note there. All right, moving on. So we're on the third white tree of Gondor, planted in Minas Tirith by King Torandor in the third age of 1640. Um, and this one lived until 2872 and with the death of uh, Belekthor II. Uh, and that was, uh, he was the ruling steward. So he was not actually a king. He was a steward in the line of, uh, in, in, you know, who, so line of Denethor and uh, Boromir and Faramir, right? 
Uh, it's not really clear why this one died, but it was left standing. So that's the one we see in Lord of the Rings. This is the third white tree of Gondor, and uh, and it's the one that Pippin sees before his audience with Denethor. Um, and so this one is finally taken down and laid to rest in the tombs of the kings in 3019 when Aragorn uh, finds uh, the white tree of Gondor number four and it is planted and blossoms. Okay, so, you know, we can kind of see this as if if it's really true that this that this tree, this white tree, that's a descendant from Galathelion, right, the perfect image of Telperion um, or the slightly imperfect image of Telperion. Um, then, you know, it, it, it makes sense that, um, that it would, it would flourish and blossom now that the King has returned. Right. So it's kind of like, it's almost like feeding off the same life energy. Um, there's some kind of special, uh, almost spiritual presence going on with this tree. So really interesting symbology to consider in all of this. So, uh, just to sum this all up, the white tree of Gondor is a line of trees descended from Nimloth the fair, the tree given to Numenor as a symbol of friendship. As an image of Telperion, the silver tree of Valinor, it is a symbol of the favor and kinship of the elves who loved Telperion dearly. It's also a symbol of the elvish ancestry of the Dúnedain, even a symbol of fraternity. And I would even go so far as to argue that it is a symbol of Luthien the Fair. And perhaps this is why Sauron hates it with such a passion. Not only is it a symbol of Valinorian hope, a symbol of friendship between men and elves, and a reminder of their kinship as children of Iluvatar, but it alludes to the first one who bested him, right? The light and the darkness, Luthien. So um, so yeah, I hope this taught you a little something about the white tree of Gondor. I hope you feel like you understand it a little better, right? Just break it down again one last time. Telperion, Gal Galathelion, the perfect image. Galathelion begets Celeborn, Celeborn begets Nimloth, and then you have four white trees of Gondor, right? Okay, so Nimloth of Numenor, four white trees of Gondor. Um, so really interesting history really associated with this, uh, cool stories about like a Sildor. Um, I'm, I'm guessing we'll probably see Nimloth the fair figure figure prominently in uh, the rings of power coming up. So, you know, that'll be interesting to see how they treat that. Hope they do it well. So that my friends is the story of the white tree of Gondor, a primer on its role and significance in the history of middle earth. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that like button and uh, hey, drop me a comment, say what's up. Uh, let's talk more about the white trees of Gondor. If you got some other knowledge to hit me with, uh, to hit the rest of the audience with, uh, let's do it. So drop it in the comments below. Thanks for watching, everybody. Talk at you next time.